Hey guys, welcome back to Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door. Uh, so, Bobbery ended up getting kind of the shit kicked out of him in the last part, so we're gonna go find him and see if if he's... Uh, more like the fireballs were invading his personal space. Yeah. Toss Why the courage just... shell, you asshole! Toss the, toss the courage... There we go. <laughs> Okay, so why didn't we just... Uh, okay, that was a weird... Yeah, yeah what? That, I, I, I fell into... The... Falling into any pit of water will get a chain chomp fish up your up your rectum, so uh, don't do that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what I was about to ask is, why didn't we just kill the Will-O-Wisps? Uh, because we had to get uh, not Lord Crump and the, and the Toad out of there safely. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, also, uh, this is important if you want to you save yourself some time. Uh, because, um, it, at some point you are going to need to get a coconut to give to Flavio, because he's just that kind of a dick. So you have to go back, if you want to save yourself a backtrack tr trip, uh, hit this ch uh, tree now and get the coconut. I, I think you can, I think you can, uh, throw it at enemies as in battle, and I believe you can use it to cook for a handful of different things, but, uh, yeah, that's... Wacko bumps disgust me. Well, we're, why are we... We're talking about coconuts, dude. No, I'm just... Because you're in your inventory for a little bit, and you're hovering over Wacko Bumps for a bit, and it says a lump of something. <laughs> like, they don't know what it is. Besides you're e the fact you're that eating it has, a bruise. You're e yeah, you're eating a bruise. And you know... I, I've read some information on, like, the wiki that the civilians like to describe it as a pastry. Well, it's it's like shaped cus it's shaped like a Japanese pastry of some type. I forget. Yeah, you know what? But that ain't fucking custard inside it's, there. It's 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 a it's a visual gag. It's because you know your standard cartoon bump on the head looks a lot like a meat dumpling. Oh yeah, yeah, I get all that. <laughs> but I want to reach deep into this. So what exactly it is you're putting in your fucking mouth? I don't know, but it heals twenty. It heals twenty five HP. You're eating whack a pus. <laughs> okay, y y yeah. Okay, let's just you know make it slightly less disgusting and assume. That this particular breed of mole just naturally grows a meat dumpling out of its head whenever it takes a, a too hard of a whack. Oh, such an innocent mind, Lewis. <laughs> hey, meat dumplings are great. Okay, have you ever had one? I don't think I. Wait, depends. Like, okay, have you ever ever gotten a meat dumpling from an from a, an Asian food place? Yeah, I think yeah, I have those. Um, uh, they're really good. Like, I could I could eat those things like. But that's corn. not what they are. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a play on what the old cartoon bump on the head looks like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, um, as you noticed, I could have saved Bobbery at any point, but I also decided to go rummaging through the grass first. So, yeah, you whack the tree, and then he, he, he falls out, and he thinks this is his last leg, so... Uh, he's going to tell us that his last request is to, and I'm not joking here, drink a bottle of soda, uh, because it's got sentimental uh, value to him. So uh, that's why we needed the coconut, uh, is because um, the Flavio's an asshole, and we'll get to that in just a moment because we're gonna be heading back to town in just a moment, in just a little bit. And so he he won't give you his soda unless yeah. you give him a coconut. Well. Okay, well, I, I'll just explain now. So Flavio says that uh, we it's an important uh, piece of supplies, and that in order for him to give it to us, we have to replace it with something else. But Flavio is also a picky motherfucker, so it has to be suitable to island cuisine. So you can give him any kind of food item. You can give him mushrooms, you can give him the goddamn whack -a bump you can give him anything, and he won't say that it's fitting enough. It needs to be something islandy. so we have to give him the coconut. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not That joking. doesn't sound like a fair trade to me. <laughs> no, it doesn't. But he's also an idiot, so I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to be done again. I'm not going to be, like, questioning him about this. What's more... This is also, I'm just going to say this is also a reference to uh, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, because he said it's Chocola Cola, which is uh, from Mario and Luigi. Yeah, yeah there's a uh, Chocola Force... Uh, it was a Chocola Woods, I think. It, it was Chuckle Huck Woods, I believe. Chuckle Huck, yeah. One of the, yeah, but, yeah but it is, I think it is a reference to the Superstar Saga. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the few times they, they really referenced one another until Mario and Luigi Paper Jam uh, did the whole crossover thing. So they were they were planting the seeds with this game. I, I, I guess. I, I don't know. What makes less sense to me than, than this is the fact that you can go to the shop and to the end and they'll charge you coins when you're all stranded together on this desert island. Like, you'd think we'd want to stick together or something. Whatever. 
so yeah, so he gives you the Chocola co uh, Cola, and you can just head back. The, I honestly think that the backtracking here is almost as bad as Chapter Four because you have to go back and forth from that uh, from the town to that room Bobbery was in like three different times, and it's kind of obnoxious. I think I'm ah. also. Did you bring the Chocola Cola? Oh, uh, the Chocola Cola is a um a key. Now what about the ice? Uh, sorry, John. The no ice survived. I, I can't drink it out of the bottle either. Give me a cup. <laughs> you forgot my drink? My diet, <laughs> Dr. Kelp? <laughs> to be honest, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of numb to backtracking now because I've spent so much time in, like, MMORPGs and Harvest Moon and games like those are nothing but running back and forth. When you play Final Fantasy XIV, <laughs> you kind of inherently built an immunity to so that sort of shit. Oh, but... Still troubles them. No, more, more, more in... I'm more talking of Harvest Moon, though, because every morning, okay, you're going to pick the plants that have grown to maturity, and then you're going to run to the shop where you buy seeds. You're going to wait until 8 a.m. so that this place will actually open. You're going to buy the seeds. You're going to run back. You're going to plant the seeds. You're going to realize you bought one too many one too few lily lily seeds so you're going to run back and get that one lily seed and then you're going to run back to your farm you're going to plant the seed you're going to water the plants and then you're going to look and you're just going to stare at your farm for like five straight minutes because you're basking in the satisfaction of having actually managed to fit all that into one stamina bar and then you're going to go foraging for mushrooms because you've got more stuff to do that day and you don't want to go to sleep <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, this is uh, one of my favorite gags in the game is that you give him the Chocola Cola, he goes to his eternal rest, but his eternal rest is just him taking a nap, so you whack him on the head and then he wakes up and joins your party. <laughs> so. And then ask whether or not we have adventures in the afterlife as well. I didn't die with you, you kook. Well, he was he was a little bit delirious, so you know. Yeah. There's, there's. We that. will have adventures in the afterlife next game, though. <laughs> Wait a minute, though. What if he was really looking forward to reuniting with Scarlet? Oh, he probably yeah. was. <laughs> You know what amuses me? Some bob bombs blow up and they're gone forever, but then there are just other bob bombs that don't. Uh, if you're, it's, it's, it's our, if you, if you happen to be a party member in RPG, you can blow up as much as you want. Is basically the the logic here. Yeah, it's no different than how Voltorb and Electro can self destruct and keep coming back. Yeah, yeah. although in in some RPGs where you do have a self destruct move, it does actually knock you out. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, most of the time, I think explosion and self destruct definitely faint the Pokemon. If you use them uh, here, though, it's just his form of attack. So a uh, Bobbery, for what it's worth, I think is also is with Vivian, one of the best party members in the game. Uh, for one thing, once you fully upgrade him, he has a fuck ton of HP. He's got like 40 HP and he does a lot of damage with his attacks, too. So I just uh, I like having him. I usually will have him out, if not Vivian. So, yeah. Um, so anyway, this is the point where we have to go back again. So, you know. Chapter 4 was a little bit obnoxious. Chapter 5 is almost as bad. The only thing is is that the the area in which you go back and forth in Chapter 5 is a lot smaller than the, the route between Twilight Town and the Creepy Steeple in Chapter 4. So, you know, there's that. Again, I don't mind the backtracking so much because uh, I just I find the world in, enjoyable enough that I don't really mind going back and forth that much. And it takes like two minutes, so it's not really that big of a deal for me. But it, I do understand that it is probably most people's biggest complaint with the game. So I just, I feel like it's worth mentioning. Um, also, so anyway, Flavi, we need Flavio to go open the area at the end of the, <laughs> at the end of the, so we put it up to a vote and everybody says, go, <laughs> you dick. Just go fuck off, asshole. <laughs> yeah. So now, uh, Flavio hates you all. So now Flavio joins your party and, um, he'll be following, oh, wait, hold on. This is one of my favorite things to do in the game. So, jump on, jump on the yoke. <laughs> <laughs> um, of course, he doesn't actually fight. He's just no, a he's, tag along. He's just a tag along. Okay, so John, you know more about the speed runs to this game in, than I do. There's a there's a glitch where you can skip chapters in chapter five, right? There's a it requires skipping a chapter. I've done a bit of research beforehand. I don't know all the details yet, but the point is, when you do that, you can pretty much keep Flavio with you for the rest of the game. Yeah. And he sporadically appears in pretty much every scene. Yes. Every cutscene. So there's a sequence later down the road where you're launching a rocket into space and Flavio's there with the rocket. Not only that, Flavio also shows up during Bowser and Peach sections. So you're just yes. like Does talking... He have 
<laughs> Dialogue? No, he's just no. there. He's he's just there. It's a glitch. Like, he's just... The game, for some reason, decides to put Flavio in every scene afterwards when you activate the glitch. He doesn't talk. He's just there. Huh. Yeah, it's 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 absolutely hilarious to see because again, like this scene where you're being launched into the space, it's just Mario and the partner flying through the air, like spinning, and then Flavio's just kind of like gliding through the air. With <laughs> it's it's absolutely <laughs> hilarious to see. So yeah, um, so anyway, you need to have Flavio go with you in order to, um, to give you him the skull gem. Uh, I think I was just mashing the A button uh, there, so. I don't know what he says if you ask him for coins. He probably just gets offended. So, you put the skull gem into the into the uh, the little skull icon thingy on the on the right. And you, Doc, pay you're not paying us, you dick. Uh, so you you put the the skull gem there, and then you reenact the song that he sings. So I think it's like it's like uh, Stash. Yar har fiddle dee. <laughs> yeah. It's Stash Brothers, best of friends, three times Stash. Uh, so you have to, I think, ground pound the the red Stash three times, and then or hit him on the head three times, and then you have to hit the blue Stash in the belly four times. I fucked it up because I I needed to ground pound instead of uh, instead whacking of it. Uh, whacking it. Whacking it. So I, I left this battle in just because this is the first example of us using uh, Bobbery in a, in a fight. Um, his explosion attacks do, do more damage to the, uh, to the embers than uh, a normal attack, so, you know, that's, that's cool and, and everything. Uh, you'll start fighting these guys as random bat- no, wait, I think you fight lava bubbles instead as random ba battles starting with the dungeon. Uh, I can't remember, remember, it's been a while since I, I played the game, so, yeah. Kaboom! Um, it's also, this is also another really weird thing, because in the original Paper Mario, you got, uh, Bombette, who was the bob -omb character in that game, uh, very early, and Bobbery's the last character you get, so. Oh, so we've got, well, uh, assuming that you don't leave, um, Miss Mouse for later. Yeah, uh, the, yes, the last mandatory character, because uh, you do need him in order to beat the game, uh, Miss Mouse is optional, uh, but you can get Miss Mouse before Bobbery, so. Um... There's no real reason to, like, Miss Mouse isn't particularly useful in this chapter, so you can leave her for last if you want to. And I believe if, like, if you get go to the party list in the in the menu, I believe Miss Mouse is listed after Bobbery. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's it's not a huge, it's not a huge thing. Yeah. Miss Mouse was my last character in my first playthrough, so. Yeah. I miss optional party members in games, it's, in it's, RPGs. It's a really nice, it's a really nice thing to find. I think yeah. is the thing, you know, finding another character and it's just like, whoa, you know, it is a really nice kind of thing. And it is something that uh, this is a new thing for Paper Mario because you didn't have any optional party members in the original. Uh, in Super Paper Mario, I believe there were a handful of optional pi pixels of which I believe only like one of them was actually useful. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, it's just the uh, the. Um... The only times in recent RPGs that I remember there being optional party members is when there were DLC party members. I think that's how they're, you're going to get them nowadays, anyway. It's lame though because they're they're never. Oh, I agree. I agree. No, they're never integrated into the story at all. It's like. In Atelier Aisha, there's the there's a couple party members that you get by DLC, and they're NPCs in the game, but there's like no story explanation for why they're suddenly going along with you. They just are. Yeah, uh, it's another thing is that lately we've been seeing a lot of RPGs that will only have like a very small cast of characters, and like they'll have some kind of job system, and there's optional jobs. And stuff like I remember in Bravely Default, there's a handful of jobs that are harder to find than others, but it's it's not quite the same as finding a new job as it is finding a brand new character to have on your team. Well, yeah, but you know, you can have optional party members and your job system in the same game. At least you can in Final Fantasy Tactics because Tactics has like a handful of um special NPC characters that you can recruit throughout the game. And yeah, they'll die permanently if they get if they don't get revived in time when they get knocked out. But like some of them, like, one of them is a machinist, which I don't think is a job that you can actually get for other characters. Yeah, you know what, you're, you say that, Dragon Quest Six had an optional party member, and uh, that game had a job system too, so, yeah, cool. Right, 
Dragon Quest had a job system? Uh, yeah, it, it depends on the, the game. Dragon Quest 3 had a job system. Dragon Quest 6 has a job system. I believe 7 also has a job system, and 9 does. It, it's not something that's in, like, every game. It's just some of them. Huh. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, learn something new every day. Copyright infringement. <laughs> Plagiarists. Actually, I believe uh, I believe Dragon Quest 3, the first game with the job system, came out before uh, Final Fantasy 3, which was the first Final Fantasy huh. game with the job system. So, yeah. I'm going to have to research this now. <laughs> yeah, we get it. The part's over. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> what? <laughs>